Hi, everybody. I'm Father Harry. I am the Padre, and this is Michael Pritchard. He's called the Pritch. So together we're the Padre and the Pritch. And we're bringing you this half hour, hopefully, to uh, enlighten, inspire, and perhaps have a laugh or two about life itself and and what you're doing in your own life to uh, make it better. Right. So uh, we we go around in a, a little different topic each week, and uh, this week I thought I thought we might uh, take a phrase that I like. The translation is different now, but oh. when when uh, Jesus was with his 12 disciples and he, he was taking bread and wine saying, this is my body, this is my blood, uh, and take it and eat it and drink and do it in memory of me. It says in the scriptures, many of his followers walked away and the translation there was, it was too much to stomach. Wow. So in the stomach, uh, mm. and you and I know that sometimes our stomachs act up, getting a message from our brain or our mind that something's not right. So, right. so I have an up, upset stomach. Well, why is your stomach upset? Well, maybe it's because I'm not uh, doing good in school, or maybe it's because my... Uh, my friends don't like me anymore. Maybe it's because I'm not accepted wherever I go, but my stomach is always churning and churning, mm. and I can only live on so much Pepto-Bismol. Well, yeah, the the acidics in... in, uh, in See, in I knew you'd have a medical room. <laughs> well, the acidics, it, but also in, intuition. Not the ascetics. Ac <laughs> aesthetics. Acid. But the acid, acidic nature tells you something it's it's part of your soul's intuition truly and if you you know something you don't know why you know it you can have i've had on numerous occasions have had a thing called uh audio precognition i hear something before it happens and it upsets you before the event and you're like something's off if you ask any police officer they call it cop gut and oh. something's wrong uh, firemen too. You see something, you notice something. There's a spiritual intu intuition that danger may be ever present, uh, lethality may be ever present. You look around and you're hyper uh, aware. Combat veterans have a lot of this as well because you become hyper aware, and your stomach is the first place that that locates. Hmm. And you, you like so my gut tells me. You've heard this before from cops yeah. on cop shows. They go, something in my gut's not right. And, and so they call it cop gut. And, and I, they had it on numerous occasions. You see things, you don't know why, something's not right. And you look around and then there is danger ever present or there is a fire or there is an art or something is combustible or there's something you can do to... Uh, to help alleviate that situation. Yeah. I think a lot of times I taught my kids a, a thing, uh, great, you're gonna find this ironic, but a great FBI uh, director uh, of uh, forensics, uh, he was a psychiatrist, he started the BAU. And- What's he, the BAU? A, a behavioral analysis unit. Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah. Just try, trying to help. Oh, out. the BAU, Let's, yeah, it, yeah. It's so, at the University of. Uh, <laughs> but the BAU, uh, he's uh, he he's written lots of Park Dietz is his name, and he said there's presently uh, 350 million people in the world, and uh, about two million of them are psychopaths. He said this on 60 Minutes. Oh, which means they have the potential to do great danger to you. So that's one in 300 if you separate the children. And he was telling us that. So I amplified that to teach my children to be aware that there might be danger present. So I tell them that we have a code in our family that if I say this word, that means danger present, which is 300. In other and words, this person, a, oh, they know. Oh, they know. My kids know. Yeah, they're, my kids are. 300? 300 because <laughs> one in 300 has a potential to be lethal to you. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Because they're mentally uh, ill and violent. They have no conscience. This is from a book from uh, Martha Stout called The Sociopath Next Door. So when I'm teaching this stuff to people, because we have so many church shootings, Harry. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. We have so many school shootings, so many supermarket shootings, so many theater shootings. Some people are born without a conscience. And uh, Mar Professor Martha Stout tells us that uh, there's a thing called the sociopath next door. That's the name of her book. I recommend you give it to your kids before they leave for school. It's a short book, but it's a brilliant book from a medical psychologist from Harvard. Mm -hmm. And the same as Park Dietz. Be aware. There's yeah. ever-present things that could be harmful to you or your kids and the holy innocence of our community. Now, what about, uh, we're, we're back to the stomach, what about when you were first doing stand-up or had to go mm. on a stage? Did your stomach go in knots and whirls and until you felt comfortable? Or y You know what? Uh, by the time I was really hitting my stride, I had been, and I, I don't know how to put this because sometimes... You know, you always give me grief. I don't know why I know the things I know to say to the crowd. Oh, that's an intuition. You look, you know, you have to say something, and I, I, I tried to be ever so uh, thoughtfully kind to most people in the crowd. You have to have your, you have to have your heckler lines. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to teach Robin, you know. Uh, heckler lines is, uh, you know, it's hard for you to believe. It's hard for me to believe that uh, out of 100,000 sperm, yours was the quickest. So, you know, you have to have these lines to say to people. And then the crowd will laugh, and then you kind of, that Get through there. deflects them away. Well, while you're standing backstage waiting to go out to see 40, 30,000 people at an arena right. or something, That's, yeah. And is your stomach churning then, or not really? No, because... But I, you're sweating like a hog. Oh, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I, said, I'm, I, said, I, said, I always said I'm sweating like Dom DeLuise at a Jenny Craig confession seminar. So, <laughs> but, but I used to get out when I opened for, like, uh, Chicago. I opened for uh, Boss Skaggs. I opened for Diana Ross. I, had, I was completely calm even before I went out, because I knew this was opportunity meets a chance to help heal and make aware, folks, the connectivity. And, you know, Robin used to go, where does that come from? And I would say uh, prayer, spiritual life, uh, meeting. Uh, if you, it, it, When I would take people who were anxious to be with uh special needs kids uh, and, and ride horses or whatever. And I watched this old combat vet uh, from Vietnam watching the kids at Hallett Creek Ranch. And he's watching them. And he's a tough bird. He's all shut down. He's as cold and ruthless, as, <laughs> as tough as you can get. One of my most favorite things is to close with the enemy and kill them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go over and watch the horses with the kids who are... <laughs> on that horse frequency where they have fun. <laughs> so we go, <laughs> thank you, John. So all of a sudden I go over and he is, it's his gut. Uh oh, It's lived in. Inside him. Inside him. And then all of a sudden one of the guys said, you know, I said, are you okay? And he goes, no. My tears small old like they came from the cellar of my soul. Oh. He had held all those tears in all those years. Oh. And finally, he's now operating in the, the just letting it go. And when he's watching this the autistic kid and another kid with cerebral palsy, and the kid's in a giddy state, they call this angel man syndrome uh, uncontrollable laughter in uh, neurodiverse kids is angel man syndrome. And... It's it's a joyful, blissful thing, and they're they're riding along, and I see this guy go like this. I go, wow, I go, you been holding that in a while? Yeah, like sixty-seven. <laughs> oh, so they, you know, <laughs> I have to chime in here because I've I've had weddings where whatever that word you just use. The bride will have, uh, what's it, uh, where she starts giggling. Oh, yeah, yeah angel and, man syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Just, and then no reason. And then uh, I, I had Nervous this, anxiety, yeah. Yeah, I had this uh, uh, kind of celebration with another priest at a wedding. He said, 
That's uncalled for. And I said, just <laughs> shut up and stand back. I didn't tell him to shut up. I no, but him. I know. You, I was just, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Because if you have enough weddings, you see this once in a while, and they say, well, she's probably been drinking, and that's why, and even if she has been Wrong. drinking, she's just so nervous right. that she's going to laugh and giggle and <laughs> and not know what she's giggling about. And a lot of times it's to control tears. Oh, Okay. Because they they don't want to, people for some inexplicable reason, I've never, folks, tears that do not flow will make other organs weep inside of us. We get sick if we don't flow with that, that expression of joy or sorrow or sadness. And it can go, unaddressed grief can turn to anger, resentment, and that can turn to rage. And that, of course, can turn to violence. So... Tears that do not flow will make other organs weep. And we get sick if we're not healthy and well mm. and alleviating the stressors. And so when they are crying, and I, I, used to, I used to talk to people in hospice, and I was sitting with an old-timer one time, Father, and I just, he was just, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just had this funny feeling, and I started singing, you know, he was an old timer and he had lived up in Lodi and Stockton. And he was such a sweet old guy. But he would, you could tell he was holding a lot in. And I started singing. Uh, you are oh, my sunshine. Even even better. Oh, oh my darling. Oh, oh my, my darling. darling. Oh, my darling Clementine. You are lost and gone forever. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. And he looked and goes, that was my mom and dad's favorite song. And I was like, oh, well, fine. So <laughs> that, I promise you, and you know this, it comes from the Holy Spirit guiding you to, to sing what you need to. You know what they call it? Quantum synchronicity. Can now, you say quantum that? Quantum synchronicity, synchronicity, I can say it. I can't spell it. Mm. <laughs> Neither can you. Kate Gerardo. <laughs> <laughs> Quantum means a uh, you know a, a, a measurement of volume something, and synchronicity of course means it's all synchronous coincidence coming together right serendipity yeah, yeah mm -hmm. okay and so the grace filled moments of our life are those moments so yesterday I was talking to a young nurse who I didn't know she had graduated from USF and a priest walked up. Uh, who's retired, and he hands me his book that I, I gave you. It's right there. And he's the sweetest guy. He, he, he's uh, East Indian, raised there, and then came here to a school. He was uh, from poverty circumstances, but the Jesuits did the right thing, and they, and they educated him for free in Milwaukee. And he went to a great Jesuit high school and then chose the priesthood. And he's still teaching, and he was teaching up at USF, and and so she and he start talking, and I said, he he goes, I wonder why that happened. And I go, well, Father John, I, I would say quantum synchronicity. <laughs> and everything happens for a reason. I always tell everybody coincidences are God's way of remaining anonymous. Oh, right. I'll buy that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, miracles yeah. unfold right in front of us. So quantum yeah. synchronicity. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to use that on. <laughs> Not in front of our parish. No, they're going to they're going to be a guy in the back going, "Where was I yesterday? I got work to do." There won't be any tears on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that might bring out violence. Yeah, quantum synchronicity. Who Holy needs God. that, Father Harry? Oh boy. So um, you know, you know, there's. Uh, I was talking about. Uh, the the miracle of the at the beginning of the of our time here today about right. the body and blood and so that the hardest thing is uh, that scripture where they go out into the desert to listen to Jesus talk and they don't have any food you know right and they got uh, five loaves and two fishes or well, five fish you know what I'm thinking yeah <laughs> no no it's a, a, my take on it which is all wrong and anti-scriptural was that no uh, person of that culture 
would take a walk out into the desert or the countryside mm. without stopping at the deli first. They have some food. And get some, you know, some some kind of thing for the road. That they And all of a sudden, Jesus got to them while they were passing the basket around, and they started digging into their pockets and say, oh, I got a, I got a piece of bread here. So they're going to share. They're going to share, yeah. So the thing okay. was about sharing, which is— Isn't uh, that a miracle too, though? It certainly is a big miracle, especially right. guys like us. We don't— <laughs> I don't normally share my food, folks, especially not my PPJ. And it shows. Oh! <laughs> No, I'm so proud of you. You've lost a lot of weight. I did, yeah. But I, I, I found some of it that's back. back oh, is it? You, 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 you know, saving it in a bag? That's why I didn't have to lift the chair. I sat down. <laughs> we were even even there. You know. Behind every big man, there's a big behind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for okay. that slogan. You're welcome. Yes, of course. It's which I will use when it's next I talk about you. Oh, of course. Which that's, could be right now. He could introduce me that way. <laughs> So anyway, uh, mm. the, the sharing part of, of people's lives, uh, I've been struck by the number of people who've left the Ukraine and the number of people uh, in Poland who are very, uh, there are religious people. Very. They've very, taken very those Catholic. people in in droves. And there's been no, oh, yeah, yeah, they're coming right. into our no. country, taking our jobs in. None of that. You know, it's, right. we have something now that they would say in Poland, that's been taken away from you in the Ukraine. And, I mean, just to think of a woman taking two or three kids and getting on a bus or a train and going across the border and living with strange people whose language they may not even share. Hmm. And while they're worried about their oldest son who's fighting or the father who had to go into the military. Right. What a, what a great sacrifice that is. Uh, just just to welcome people into your home. But, but what is the benefit of that? Like like for me, when I think back, at Hurricane Katrina, I was working uh, with uh, folks from Yaya down in New Orleans where my son is a doctor in the ER now. And uh, we were, I hate to stop you. <laughs> I have to go back to Yaya. Yaya, that's the name of the art program for children that teaches in the projects in the area. Is it YAYA? Y -A? Y -A? Y yeah, 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 yeah. That's the name of it. And Does it stand for something? It, it it's just uh, what it is. It's like Google. It's it's <laughs> it kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. Meta or you know whatever. Well, but and we would say in the German background, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Back to yeah. Okay. yeah. So <laughs> he's gonna hit me before I do my Sergeant Schultz. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you you picture that these kids, uh, Courtney and uh, Tari, came to live with my family. There are two kids out of the projects in New Orleans that had to suffer through that. They came and lived with us all summer long, taught art in our community here in San Rafael oh. at the program for youth and arts, youth and arts in San Rafael, and they were from Yaya. If you Google that, folks, you can see Yaya, New Orleans, and youth and arts. We can see our our young people doing art here. And they live with us all summer to teach art to the little kids so you can get them started early to express themselves. And uh, they were amazing young people. And I remember walking out and, and, you know, they were just so happy to be at our house. There's a swimming pool. There's a boat dock. The egrets are flying in. There's a big owl there sitting there. And he's this young guy, uh, Tari, goes, Mr. Mike, I hear sirens. I hear gunshots. I hear violence. And, and I live and in And here, I just right? have to listen to you. <laughs> Which is, oh, you know what Courtney did? Courtney gave me a, you're going to love this. It's just right down your alley. Courtney gave me a, a, a mug that said, uh, save oxygen, shut up. <laughs> just like you. Isn't yeah. that funny? Mm. So, <laughs> well, now I know youth arts, youth arts, but uh, I must have missed your explanation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, they were with you, and yeah. you were sharing your life. family. My three kids gave up their individual rooms so those two teenagers, older teenagers, could have their own rooms. And they had never had that before. Now, what did you have to go through uh, 
Were their parents li living? Yes. And, and so yeah, they had yeah. permission? But Katrina, Katrina had happened, and there was so much sorrow down yeah. in New Orleans, so much sadness. But to get them away and get them teaching art, because they were both accomplished artists, really oh. good artists, they got out of that sorrow from Katrina, came to uh, a, a safe harbor of uh, laughter and joy. And then they were helping with the Yaya -Ya program here and the little kids from the canal and from uh, down at uh, Marin City. They were amazing. And, and Tari, he went on. He had a great career. He moved to New York. And, and we still keep in contact with him. And, uh, but, but the thing is, it taught my kids, share. Mm. Share. Be grateful for what you have. You'll get your room back. Quit mm -hmm. whining, right? Mm -hmm. And once they did that and they realized what it was doing to restore the confidence and 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 the just the gratitude that these kids had, they're away from violence. They're away from the sorrows of Katrina. And that is what you do. It's what the people of Poland are doing. My young niece uh, in Chicago is Polish and She's a remarkable spirit. She's married to my uh, young nephew, Michael. And uh, Asha is, uh, they're just great people. And uh, we met her parents. And uh, her parents just. Uh, uh, oh. I, I uh, sometimes get calls uh, from yeah. people I don't like, so I just turn it off. Oh, Michael Pritchard. <laughs> <laughs> He just called me. <laughs> That's all right. You'll anyway, be okay. All right. But what I was going to tell you is, and I think this is really important, the more you share, like when uh, Asha was talking about it, her parents came to visit us. And I don't know why. I was just being goofy, and I did a bunch of voices, and her father asked her in Polish, is he mentally okay? <laughs> and she goes, no, Dad. He's not, <laughs> but he's a comedian. He goes, oh. <laughs> not a really highly regarded <laughs> professional. He's a comedian. Not a professional. In and Poland, the, the, the comedians. No. Yeah, but in the Ukraine, a comedian is the leader of the country and doing a good job. And amazingly so, chosen. You know, can you imagine to, to he has to go to, to ask, you know, let let Ukraine be free, right? And he has to ask uh, the pharaoh of Russia. And he's leading. And uh, can you imagine being called? Can you imagine being a comedian yeah. like Robin Williams, who's soulful like Zelensky is, and like Volodymyr Zelensky, and soulful, soulful guy. If you'd ever seen the first episode of that show where he was giving a speech, that's why they voted him president. They want that guy who was a teacher in the sitcom. And it oh. was very popular. It won a, an Emmy in Russia. The Russian people loved it. And so now it would be, it's crazy. It's like us declaring war on Canada. So he was more than a stand-up. He, oh, no. he had a he, TV show. The big hit TV show oh. that everybody loved the school teacher character of. Okay. And he was sweet and, you know, it would have been like Welcome Back, Cotter, when Gabe Kaplan was on and it was way back. And Gabe Kaplan ran for president. And everybody said, that's what we need. We need somebody that knows how to talk to the kids. Mm. And, uh, you know, the more I go out and talk to kids and, I learn more from kids than I've ever taught yeah. Mary. I learn. Well, more. we're not electing you president just because you can talk to kids. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I. I. I pray for President Biden every day, and anybody who's in their seventies and eighties, like many of our senators, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I can. You know. You know. Yeah. I mean, you. You talked about yeah. this. You get exhausted early, and the day you just want to sit and be and yeah. just rest up. And right. you're representing people all over, different right. cultures, and they're calling and they're wondering why you're not responding, uh, or you know, there's only so many hours in the you day. You got staff members that demand your time yeah. to tell you this is happening and that is happening, and your brain is like, you know, wow, mm -hmm. it's hard. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. You were the vicar general. You, you don't have to tell me. I was the vicar general. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 
hey, you were the vicar general. And he went, <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> like a yaya. Yeah. Only they called me a yo yo. Youth and arts. <laughs> yo yo. Yo yo. Yo yo. Yo yo. <laughs> Oh, boy. That's well, a different meaning than when John Wayne said it in the old cowboy movies. How'd he say it? Yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Thanks for that. We should not have our show. We should not have our show. <laughs> Thanks for that. We should. How's our show coming, by the way? You know, uh, uh, here's, here's what I tell everybody. If you like it, you like it. If not... <laughs> Sayonara. See you later, alligator. If you want, Crocodile. See you soon. <laughs> well, we've come to uh, we've come to uh, the, just about the end of our time, and uh, I've had a call from Pritchard, which I cut off, and now you got no, a call. I call yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was from uh, the Archbishop yeah. saying, "You two off." I used to in the old days. I used to say uh, before I talk, "Lord, fill me with worthwhile stuff." And nudge me when I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would jerk. <laughs> I've been nudged. Okay. <laughs> and I thank you all for being with us. And uh, you can catch us on YouTube, a lot of different places. You can catch us at fatherharry.org. Uh, we have probably some uh, almost 30, 30 shows now together. And we're doing our best. And we'll be back again Thanks be to God to some very kind people. Yes. So I'm the Padre, and this is the Pritch. God bless you. See you all again. Stay too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm.